So Mob Games have been teasing what they're calling phase two of Project Playtime. If you don't know what Project Playtime is, it's Mob Games multiplayer offering in the Poppy Playtime world. And we know that Project Playtime does share a universe with Poppy Playtime. We know it's all set in the same universe. It's all canon because we got the tape from Harley Sawyer in Project Playtime, which gave us a little bit of lore. It was very interesting. I need to stop saying that after yesterday's video. But yeah, it gave us a little bit more information of the Bigger Bodies initiative. It gave us it gave us some more clues for the world of Poppy Playtime. Now, I'm pretty sure these latest teases are mainly just there to show us what the new map's going to look like. This is the Destroyer toy, which was apparently going to be formerly known as the Recycle Mill. And I think mostly these teases are just to show off the new map that they're going to bring in and what they're calling Phase 2. Now, Phase 2 already is potentially something to note uh, that they're calling it phase two we're getting a new map does that mean we're going to get a new toy to play as as well that would be very cool but yeah i think there is a very unsubtle message being given here now again this is for project playtime but i do think this has a big meaning for the overall world of puppy playtime and the story that we're all trying so desperately to uncover and I think that Mob Games have given us just yet again more evidence that one of the most popular theories for Chapter 3 is true. Now in Chapter 3, we know we're going to be going to an area called the Playcare. And we already know what this is now. The Playcare was the central hub for what is the orphanage program behind Playtime Co. Something that we know was a lot more dark than originally designed. And there's been this big theory throughout chapter three or through the build-up of chapter three there's something that i've been talking about quite a lot and that is all to do with the gas now remember the very very first teaser we got for chapter three showed off this gas mask and the thumbnail for that video showed off this red gas and we've all been making up our own theories and one of the most obvious theories is this gas was used by playtime co to sedate the toys but there is also potentially another theory here too. This is something that I've talked about in my previous videos. The idea that we had these orphans, this just giant orphanage program, which by, by this artwork here looks like it was very, very busy, very, very popular or successful, whatever you want to say. And it looks like they had a lot of orphans in this facility. Now, these orphans were kept in an underground facility, which already is very, very weird. It's very dark. We know that there was there must have been a sinister motive behind this, because why would you keep orphans underground? We know that all these lights, for example, were fake. These were put in to make the place look more habitable. But again, this is underground underneath the facility, which means most likely that these orphans were never let out. And in fact, if you think about it, it makes way more sense that these orphans never ever left this place. They either went into the Bigger Bodies initiative. Again, remember the games in chapter two, what they were calling fun games for the kids, we know had a sinister underlying motive. They were there to, to test who would be a good candidate for the Bigger Bodies initiative. Why else would they be testing their reflexes and their reasoning skills and their, you know, um, their obedience? Why would they be testing all of these things? Well, the obvious explanation is because they wanted to find out who would be a good candidate for the Bigger Bodies initiative. But that raises a big question in, well, what about people that weren't good for the Bigger Bodies initiative? And what about those orphans that reached a certain age? Most orphanage programs, once an orphan reaches what we would consider a young adult, they are released out into the world to go and get a job and so on. And we know that they couldn't have done this because all it takes is one of these orphans to leave this facility to start talking about how, oh yeah, you know, I was kept in an underground facility and I was experimented on. I was made to do these weird tests by scientists in lab coats and all it would take is one employer to be like, wait, what? That doesn't sound right. So I think the likelihood that Playtime Co. would let these orphans leave is very, very low. So that begs the question, what did they do with these orphans once they, they hit a certain age or the ones that weren't good enough to be in the Bigger Bodies initiative? And I think the pretty obvious explanation is that they killed them. Again, this probably relates back to the gas. And we can see all three of these images have really, really, they have gas there in the focus. See all these pipes. We see all these steam coming out. This is something that we saw back in chapter one and chapter two. The steam jump scares, remember I said, I pointed out in chapter two, I was like, no, you only get one. Now I know why. But I think the most likely explanation and the darkest explanation is that once those children got to a certain age and they were no longer useful for Playtime Co., they were killed. They were killed probably with the gas as that was probably the most humane way that they could do it. 
But then that raises another question. What did they do with all the bodies? What did they do with the bodies of the unfortunate people that were killed by the toys as well? And I'm pretty sure we've just got our answer. Yes, I'm pretty sure the Destroyer toy, like most things in Playtime Co, had a dual purpose. Yes, I'm sure they used this to get rid of, you know, defective toys or toys that were recalled, like the oven, for example. But that was something that you would expect to not be all that common. You wouldn't expect a toy company to regularly have to destroy toys. That would be silly. So I do think that this destroyer toy has a secondary function of this was how they got rid of all the bodies. Now, your first question is probably, well, hang on a minute. Wouldn't people realize, wouldn't they smell it? And maybe, but then also at the same time, we know that all the staff in Playtime Co pretty much from all the ones we've seen they've all been wearing these protective suits they've all been wearing this hazmat gear which you know includes respirators which i do think is partly because of the gas it seems very weird that these these staff members would have to wear these protective suits i mean what are they protecting against they clearly don't protect against the toys so it's probably protecting them against the gas but it also could be again so that they can't figure out what's going on and i'm sure some staff members probably did figure out what was going on and they probably ended up just like anybody else that asks too many questions they probably ended up you know guarding storage b for example but yeah i just thought this was a really cool little uh easter egg i guess or a little, little hint i do think this is yet another hint that playtime co had a very efficient system going on and i do think this is all related to the uh the play care i think i think you can kind of piece together what what poppy was saying when she said that bad things happened here and i think this is a, another in your face hint by mob games kind of kind of showing us that our we are getting closer with our theories, I guess, which is pretty cool. I mean, maybe it is literally just a place to destroy toys, but again, seems weird that a factory that's sole purpose is to create toys would have a, an area designed specifically to just, just destroy toys. Like, why would they need to destroy toys so often? It seems a little bit odd to me. Again, you know, maybe the odd recall, but I don't think that this was something that you would really want to happen as a business. You would want all the, you know, if the toys were not great, you'd just sell them on a sale. The only ones really that would need to be destroyed are ones that were, were really dangerous or something. So yeah, you would hope, you would hope as a business that you'd never have to use the destroyer toy. So the fact that it's sat here like, hey, look, we've got this cool area to destroy toys seems again, very sinister. And I'm pretty sure it had a dual purpose but there we go this is just my little thoughts on project playtime phase two i'm hoping we get a little bit more lore hope we get another vhs tape in phase two that would be really cool that would be really nice to get a little bit more insight into the the game as a whole but uh yeah i'll be checking this out when it comes out i hope you do too thank you very much for watching and i will see you next time